Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs in the Paranormal. I call this episode The Bony Crab Monster, A True Story. This is the story of Laura K. Goy's lifelong experiences with extraterrestrials. Laura originally lived in Cicero, Illinois, and in 1966, she was just a young teenager, 13, 14 years old, and this is when she had a really profound UFO encounter. It all began one weekend when she went over to her friend Ruthie's house to spend the weekend. She had a great time. Sunday evening came around and it was time for Laura to go home. So Laura called her mother and asked her mother to pick her up. And while her mother was on her way to pick her up, Laura and Ruthie decided that they would wait in Ruthie's parents' station wagon, which was parked along the street in front of the house. This is called Cermak Street. It's quite a busy street with a lot, of, a lot of traffic. And they just lay down in the car and started talking and waiting. And I will let Laura describe how this encounter began. As Laura says, She got in the back seat and lay with her back facing me. I got in the front seat and lay across the seat next to the steering wheel and stuck my feet out the window. We weren't tired or anything. We were wide awake. We were laughing and chattering away. We were talking about a band we liked. We just finished laughing, and I heard, more felt than heard, this something. It was in my ears. And I said, what is that? And she didn't answer. I thought she was waiting to listen to it, but she didn't answer at all. And I said it again, and nothing. So I pulled my feet back in the car and got out. Laura's friend Ruthie was still not responding. Laura gets out of the car and looks to the right and to the left and sees nothing. Uh, she did notice that there were no, almost no cars on the street, uh, which is very strange because there should have been cars driving up and down, but there were none. And then Laura looks to the right again and gets a huge shock because there's a very large craft at very low altitude, just above the trees and the streetlights, about a block away, moving slowly towards her. And as Laura says in her own words, it was a saucer coming on a slight angle down the street. And it was just there. It wasn't there a second ago. As much time as it takes you to turn your head is how fast it was there. And it was getting really close. I just couldn't imagine how it could have gotten there without me seeing it come from a distance. I could see it coming in on a slight downward angle, straight down the block, a saucer too large to land in the street. It could only come down as far as the treetops and street lamps would allow. I could not perceive any glint of metal. Its surface appeared to be darker than the night sky. It was all lit up inside with a yellow-white light. It was revolving slowly in a clockwise direction, and it had windows all the way around separated by struts, except for one small s section. I could see right through the windows to the other side. The interior was a light color. I could make out its outline clearly. It looked like an Oreo because of its silhouette. It was sort of convex on top, saucer shaped, but not too rounded. And it just kept coming in over down the street. So Laura watched this object in utter amazement as it approached at just a few miles per hour coming straight overhead. Looking down, there was still no other traffic. Ruthie, her friend, was still not responding. Ruthie did see three other people. There were two little old ladies uh, who were not paying much attention, but what really drew Laura's attention was this other lady who looked quite strange in appearance. 
She was wearing dark clothes, but she had really strangely smooth skin. Her hair was strange. It was jet black and slicked back and shiny. And Laura said it looked almost as though it was painted on. This lady had very smooth skin. And most strange, she was wearing dark wraparound sunglasses. And mind you, this is at night. So this UFO is by now almost directly overhead. And Laura turns to this strange woman, who was quite short as well, and, s and said, look, isn't this amazing, pointing towards this craft. And this strange woman, wearing dark wraparound sunglasses, looks up at the craft in almost a disinterested, casual way, looks back down at Laura, and doesn't say a word. And in fact, Laura felt like this lady was more interested in Laura than in this amazing UFO that was directly overhead. So Laura found, thought that was strange. So this craft moves directly overhead. Laura can hear it's making a soft kind of idling noise. And as it moves overhead, it goes on down the street, directly over the street itself. And Laura follows it. She said she could walk just about as fast as it was going. She didn't have to run. She felt no fear whatsoever. It was just very interesting. And she followed this craft all the way down the street until the street hit a T intersection. At that point, this craft continued in a straight line, winning, going right over the houses on that street and disappearing off into the distance. Laura came running back uh, to wake up Ruthie. Ruthie was still lying in the back seat, uh, presumably asleep or unconscious. And Laura says her name soft, softly, Ruthie. And Ruthie instantly wakes up. And at the same time, all the traffic is back on the street and there's no sign of this other short woman wearing these dark sunglasses. So Laura is completely excited, just cannot believe what happened, and tells Ruthie. Ruthie is furious. She could not understand how she had fallen asleep, and neither could Laura, for that matter. They ran back inside, told Ruthie's parents, who were, uh, could see that the girls were very excited, and asked them why they didn't come in and wake, you know, get them out on the streets so they could see it too. Uh, but Laura said she didn't want to take her eyes off of it. it. This whole experience took maybe five minutes, ten at the most. Laura's really not sure because there was a sense of timelessness to this whole experience. And as she told me this, several red flags popped up in my mind, thinking that this is probably more than a simple sighting. First, this object was very low. Second, her friend Ruthie fell unaccountably asleep. Third, there was this strange lady who had very smooth skin, dark clothes, was short, hair that looked painted on, and was wearing dark wrap-around sunglasses. Uh, I think there's a possibility that this was a screen memory and that figure was actually a gray ET because most strange was this lady's behavior. She did not seem at all impressed by this UFO, which was quite large, and was much more interested in Laura. So hard to say for sure. Laura did not report anything else strange. There were no marks on her bodies. She had no nightmares or anything like this. This was actually a very positive experience for her. And it just, in her mind, was a really close-up UFO sighting. And she didn't think much else of it, other than it was really exciting. And nothing happened after that for years. She grew up. She ended up moving to California. She got married. She had a son. And it was some 25 years later that she started having some very weird events occurring around her. Her son was very young, four five years old, maybe six, and both 
her son and Laura started experiencing nosebleeds. These were unexplained nosebleeds. They would occur in the middle of the night or they'd wake up in the morning finding out that they had these nosebleeds. And it was weird because they were both getting them. And at the same time this was going on, Laura's son started complaining about these very vivid and scary nightmares. And these always involved strange figures coming to his room, which he described as very short, kind of having weasel-like faces with very large, dark, staring eyes. Uh, he also said that one of them looked like a skeleton-type monster with crab-like pinchers and he called it the bony crab monster. Now Laura thought these were just dreams. However, soon something happened that made her realize that these were more than just nightmares. And I'll let Laura describe this whole ordeal in her own words. As she says, there was this thing he called the bony crab monster. It was like a torso with a skull head, and it was a spider-like creature almost. And it had crab legs, and it took a piece of skin off his finger, and it said, don't be afraid. It said not to be afraid. And I remember him telling me about that and these other things he saw. They had long weasel-like faces and wore trench coats. They were all one color, a weird tan color, and they had big black staring eyes. I thought they were just dreams. They'd freak him out. But at one point, he remembered floating through the backyard and seeing one of those weasel-faced things. So at some point, these dreams, nightmares ended, and so did both their problems with nosebleeds. Uh, but what was really weird was that experience where her son said that it cut his finger because there was, in fact, a mark on his finger. And that's what got Laura thinking that there was something very strange about this experience, about these dreams. Could they be more than dreams? But she just couldn't quite figure it out, didn't connect the dots. As a UFO researcher, there's a lot of red flags in this account. Uh, nosebleeds, unexplained nosebleeds, are quite common among abductees, contactees. And Laura's son's dreams uh, have a lot of details that sound very much like greys. Short figures coming into the room, all dressed alike. Even the trench coats is a detail I've heard before. Really, the dark, staring eyes is a detail, I think, that gives this away. Uh, the E.T. saying, do not be afraid, or levitating them out into the backyard. All these details, uh, while individually might not mean much, taken together, I think they point very much towards a half-remembered series of UFO encounters. But the thing is, these dreams ended, the, night, uh, the nosebleeds stopped occurring, and again, Laura just sort of dismissed all of this as nightmares, and never mind that her son had an unexplained cut on his finger. But that all changed just a short time later when both Laura and her husband saw UFOs. Her husband saw UFO first, he was driving home from work one evening and saw a large sort of triangular or V-shaped craft uh, above him while he drove. And it was a short time later that Laura also had a UFO sighting. It was quite low in the sky. She described it as being cylindrical in shape with lights on either end. And as she watched it scooting across the sky, she saw that it was in fact being chased by a helicopter. 
So this really started to get her thinking. And she recalled her earlier UFO sighting as a young girl. And this is when she started thinking about her son's encounter or dreams with these, the bony crab monster and these weasel-like figures. And she started to connect the dots and researching the UFO subject she was shocked to see that so many of these details uh, in her own sighting and in her son's dreams and the nosebleeds and so forth matched up perfectly as indicators of UFO encounters. So this quite shocked her and she started researching not only this subject but her own life looking for any other experiences that might point towards contact and she found something that uh, really she puzzled her at first and this is what caused her to seek me out and uh, consent to being interviewed she had a very strange experience at around age five or six or so in which a figure entered into her room dressed up as a harlequin, a clown. And I will let Laura describe this experience in her own words. She did not at first think this was UFO related, but wanted to tell it to me because she thought it might be. And as she says, in her own words, I was really, really young. I don't remember how old I was exactly, but it was about five. I just remember it didn't feel like a dream at all, and I wasn't sick, so I wasn't having one of those fever things. I just remember feeling like there was this person next to me who looked like the Joker on a deck of cards. I mean, he was white, a white face, and had this really big, toothy smile. I don't remember what his nose looked like. His eyes were kind of squinty, like on the Joker cards. And he had on a whole outfit. It was velvety and it was purple and gold. And he was bouncing up and down and making this really weird noise. He looked like he was having a good time. He looked happy. And every time he bounced, I would hear this jingling. A harlequin outfit usually has bells on it. But I noticed this one didn't have any bells on it. So I don't know why I was hearing this sound. And I looked down, and I could see I was naked. I could see the tops of my knees in puic area, and he disappeared around the front of me. And then I felt something. I felt something cold and wet, and I remember seeing somebody showing me a knife, like a scalpel, and then a table draped in the same kind of fabric he was wearing. And I know this is stupid, I thought it was some kind of abuse thing, but I had no idea what it could have been. I felt as if it was a hidden memory. It was very clear, and I can see it all now. I never lost the memory. Unknown to Laura, this is something that many uh, abductees report, is seeing clown-like figures coming into their bedroom uh, as when they're very young. And uh, in fact, I have several cases of my own like this. I ended up doing a whole YouTube episode on the alien clown connection. And I did include Laura's report in that episode, but I wanted to tell her whole life story here. And uh, I absolutely do think that this weird Harlequin episode is pertinent to her UFO sightings. I think her encounter as a young girl, age 13, 14, was probably an onboard UFO experience. Though she does not recall it, I think all the red flags are there, with Ruthie falling asleep, uh, the strange figure with smooth skin, painted on hair, dark wraparound sunglasses. Again, sounds like a screen memory to me as does this clown-like figure. Uh, the fact that 
Laura has had numerous UFO sightings. It's also a red flag, but it's really those nosebleeds and her son's dreams about short figures with large dark eyes, them coming to his room saying, do not be afraid. This is a phrase ETs will often tell people. All of these add up, I think, to pointing towards a UFO encounter. I did present Laura's case in my book, Extraterrestrial Visitations, so you can find the whole story there. But I think this is a very interesting case of UFO contact. It's got some interesting things to say about the UFO phenomena, which is why I wanted to present this episode for you today. It shows how many encounters can be shrouded in amnesia and in screen memories that cause a person to overlook these experiences and basically live a normal life when in fact they are contactees and might not realize it all the way into adulthood, which is exactly what happened to Laura. I think that alone makes her case significant. Uh, so that's, again, why I wanted to present this story to you today. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And until next time, I really want to thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, keep having fun.